Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Um, I had the opportunity to film today, but I have been sick again. I am so annoyed. You know I was sick over the weekend when I did the 24 hour reading challenge. I kind of got better and I was feeling a lot, lot better. And then this past week, just another wave of cold and flu overtook me and I was like right back to square one again. Um, so I'm still sounding quite nasally, I'm sorry, but I had the opportunity to film today. I'm going away for a few nights um, next week, which is the weekend, it's Saturday today. I'm going away for a few nights and I was like, if I don't film this now, I probably won't get the opportunity to. So um, this is going to be a themed reading vlog and I can't really pick a theme name because I'm incapable of doing that because it sounds right in my head but it doesn't actually kind of like I can't describe it in like a word or two I'd like it has to be like a whole sentence anyway that will all become clear in a moment when I explain to you what I'm going to be doing <laughs> um for me in my lifestyle weekly reading vlogs just won't work because some weeks I do very very little reading some weeks I'm extremely busy obviously I work a full-time job I then come home I look after a whole household obviously I have a fiance and he helps me out as well but it's just it's some weeks I don't do an awful lot of reading or have really an awful lot to update you on other than the generic oh I'm cooking dinner oh I'm doing the washing up so I thought what would be really cool is to do some themed reading style videos so this first one, like I say, I can't really think of a right terminology for the theme, but I'm going to be reading three books. Ta -da! Um, I'm going to be reading The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, and then on Prime Reading, which if you have a Prime account um, on Amazon, there are a catalogue of books that you can read for free. It's kind of like a library. You can only have 10 at a time, I believe. Um, I've got The Kiss Quotient by Helen Hong, which I will be downloading onto my actual physical Kindle and taking away with me whilst I'm away on holiday. So you're probably thinking, Sophie, what relation do these all have to each other? Well, in my head, um, firstly, they're all TikTok hyped books at the moment. I think maybe not this one, but the love hypothesis has on the actual cover. That's not a sticker. The TikTok sensation and the tagline for the kiss quotient at the moment is the kiss quotient TikTok sensation or whatever it says. What does it actually say? Let's read it. TikTok made me buy it. That's what it actually says. So that's kind of like the first thing. But each title has a mathematical or scientific word in the title. So I was kind of going to say like academic, but I don't think they're all going to necessarily be very academic. So I was going to use that as the theme name. Um, but obviously we have equations, um, hypothesis, and then quotient in the titles. <laughs> mathematical, scientific names, words in the titles. That's what we're going with. <laughs> anyway, I thought this would be fun. I've got some ideas for some future sort of themed reading vlogs as well. So, so I thought that would be fun to kind of get kickstarted. I don't quite know how long this is going to take me, which is why I'm kind of like, it's not a weekly reading vlog. It's kind of like just a themed reading vlog. This might take me a couple of weeks to actually get all three of these done. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy. I hope you like it and I hope you enjoy the format of how I kind of give you updates as well because they might just be quite a lot of me sitting in different positions in this room and various other rooms in my house and just telling you a little bit of an update rather than being on the go. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm off work now before I go away so I'm going to be at home but yeah. Um, I filmed the clip this morning when I started the first book so let's insert that. Here? Yes, I'm in my pyjamas. And I look like this, but I'm just going to start The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. So, as you'll see from that previous clip, I started this morning The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Um, I am currently 112 pages through this, which is the beginning of chapter seven. And I didn't quite know where to stop and kind of give you my first update because when I was doing the 24 hour challenge, it was kind of more like I stopped, I had a break, I calculated my hours and then I came on rather than, oh, I've read this many pages. And I was kind of more focusing on the reading than the updates as such and trying to just 
get the hours in. Um, so I thought I'd come on now that I'm 112 pages in, the book is established, the plot line's kind of established. Um, so this book is about um, Olive and Adam. Um, Olive is a PhD candidate and um, she is trying to convince her friend that she is in a relationship um, to kind of get her off her back a little bit and then um, basically she kisses the first man that she sees. Enter Adam Carlson who is a professor at the um, university that she works at and it kind of all unfolds from there. Um, they're PhD students in sort of like biological, which is really interesting. And I read the author note, um, like about the author at the back and she is, Ali Hazelwood, um, is actually, um, like, um, a brain scientist of some kind, like neuroscience. Um, she has a PhD, I think, in neuroscience. So I'm absolutely blown away because obviously this is really real. Um, a lot of the a lot of the sort of scientific terminology and stuff is actually really real, which I wouldn't question because I'm not into science and it's not something that I know anything about. I don't have any knowledge about really, apart from I did it at GCSE and that was a long time ago. Um, but what I'm really enjoying about this so far is it's really readable. Um, it's not like this is trash because sometimes you can read something that's really readable and it's like this is really really trashy. I don't think it's trash. I think it's really readable. I think it's really easy to read so far. Um and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm enjoying so far at 112 pages we already have a lot of character dynamics kind of growing. Um we have a fake dating trope in this, I will just say that and it's one of my preferred kind of tropes in romance. I love a fake dating trope. It's a guilty pleasure. Ah, I'm not supposed to be saying guilty pleasures. You're not supposed to no. It's one of the things I enjoy reading, kind of harking back to the whole not associating any guilt or blame to some of the choices you make in your reading. So it's not a guilty pleasure, it's something I enjoy reading. And I'm really enjoying it so far, I'm really invested. I love, um, my great grandmother was called Olive and I've always loved the name. So whenever I see a character with that name, I kind of, it always kind of is like a warm hug for me. Um, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I'm interested to see where this is gonna go and I'm invested in this. Also, I've sat and read this morning 112 pages. It's about 350 pages, this book, 352. So I am intrigued to see also how quickly I can get this read and how quickly I can get through these three books. <laughs> um, because, yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading more of this. I'm sorry, someone's to start their car and got music playing and my windows are open. So sorry if you can hear that. But yeah, really enjoyed this, uh, enjoying this so far and can't wait to read more. So great start so far to the themed reading vlog. <laughs> so it is now later on Saturday. We've had a super super chilled day today and just before I came on I was like oh I'll come on and do an update of how I'm getting on with the love hypothesis. I looked at my watch and I can't believe it. it's gone six o'clock already. Where has the day gone? We have had such a lovely chilled day today. Like I mentioned earlier I've not been well again this week. I've been really poorly. Um and I just know that I need to chill right out before we go away otherwise I'll be sick again <laughs> before we go away um but it's been so lovely just chilling on the sofa so um I don't want to do spoilers in this video because I want this to be like everyone can watch it but I was kind of thinking my kind of talking through the books is going to become more sort of like there's going to be more to talk about when I've read more than one because there'll be something to compare to. Um, but I'm still really enjoying this. I am loving this. I am currently um, 204 pages in, so I'm over halfway. This is where the book actually ends. There's like a, a teaser chapter for another book by the same author in the back. So I just put a bookmark in so I could see where it actually finishes so yeah I'm over halfway through it now I'm really really enjoying this I'm loving it I'm still finding it really quick and easy to read I am loving the relationship fake dating thing I'm enjoying the angst and I am super super hooked and do you know what at this point in time I can totally understand the hype I can get behind the hype and I'm really enjoying it um and at this point would, would highly recommend it as well it's just been really lovely and I have got through 204 pages really easily today 
Um, I know I haven't done a lot else. <laughs> but it's not like I've just been just reading. I've been on my phone. I've been making lunch. I've been, you know. So I'm really enjoying this. Really, really enjoying it. Um, and I'm intrigued about where it's going to go. Buzzing. Buzzing to finish this. I'm hoping to get some more red now this evening. We've eaten at funny times today. Um, so we don't, we're not really hungry for dinner. But I'm kind of like, if we leave it too late, then we won't want to eat. So I think kind of like, we do really need to eat, but anyway. So I might have to pop to the supermarket because I should have really gone out today and done a food shop, but I'm in that kind of limbo of knowing that we're going away. So I don't want to go and do like a massive food shop, but I need to get a couple of bits in. Anyway, um, so, I'm going to sit down and read a little bit more of this. I don't think I'm going to get this finished today, um, but I have my other half's working tomorrow. So whilst I'm getting a few other bits done, I will also sit down and do some reading tomorrow as well. So, if I don't update you later on with the rest of my progress, I don't think I'm going to read all the others this quickly, by the way. Just don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Uh, today's an exception. I'm going to say that now and now I'm going to end up reading them all like in a day. <laughs> but I'll bring an update for you if it's not today, not this evening, um, tomorrow morning and let you know how I've got on. Good morning, it is now Sunday and I have some reading updates for you. Um, I did film a couple of clips on my phone whilst I was reading The Love Hypothesis uh, yesterday afternoon straight evening. Um, so hopefully I was able to put them in before this clip. Uh, but I finished The Love Hypothesis last night and I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it, there was a couple of points where it was slightly cringy, but overall it was a really, really good read. It was really fast paced. I read it all in the space of less than 24 hours. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the storyline. I kind of felt like there was enough sort of like high stakes to kind of keep me like interested on the edge of my seat. Highly recommend it. And yes, I think this holds up to the TikTok hype. I think this is worth a read. And um, I was talking to Daisy about it yesterday and she said there's also some spin-offs, um, some short stories, I believe. So I'd be intrigued to read them as well and see what they're like. But um, a really, really good start to this kind of like TikTok hyped romance stroke mathematical and scientific words in the title <laughs> themed reading vlog um a really 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 good start so really pleased with that and glad that I've read it and glad that I enjoyed it as well I am planning on picking up next um The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren um today is the last day that I get to myself um before we are off on annual leave and then subsequently going on holiday so um I do have lots of things I need to really kind of get done today and make hay while soaps on her own <laughs> rather than while the sun shines because the sun is definitely not shining today um so I'm not sure I'm going to read this one I know I'm not going to read this one as quickly because, I mean, it's already uh, nearly 11 o'clock and I haven't picked this up yet. I haven't read anything. I've just put my bookmark in on chapter one. Um, I don't really know anything about this um, at all. And I don't really want to read the, um, the blurb uh, because I don't want to give anything away. So I'm going to read a bit of this first before I kind of tell you what this one's about. However, Daisy, when we were talking and I was telling her about my vlog that I was doing and how I was doing, I said, I don't really know what to call it. And I was explaining all of what it was going to be. She reminded me of Lessons in Chemistry by Bolly, Bonnie Garmus. Bolly Garmus? Which can we just have a minute to talk about how beautiful this is underneath on the naked dust hardcover, not dust jacket. Um absolutely stunning and what I also really like is that the end pages are different colours. Um, 
so I don't think this quite fits in in the same way because I don't think this is hyped on TikTok, but it is going to be, if anyone is interested um, in Between the Covers, which is a BBC Two programme, it's actually really good. I really enjoy it. And I've watched probably the first season of it now. Um, so many books. It's just lovely reading, watching a programme all about books and people telling about, talking about the books that they like. Um, so I don't think it's quite as hyped on TikTok. And I don't think this is going to be... From what I can see, I don't think this is quite going to be a romance necessarily. Um, but it is about, it's historical as well. So it's 60s and it's to do with science research. And um, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what this is about. And I think this would be a fun one to add into the mix as something a little bit different. I know it doesn't quite go with the whole theme completely, but it has chemistry in the title. So I think we're going to add this one in as well and see see where this one takes us and how this is different to the others. So um, I also listened today whilst I was on, I don't know where I've put my phone, whilst I was on my way, um, my other half um, has got an issue, the bike that we're going away on holiday on, uh, the motorbike is needs a few repairs, so he's not riding it at the minute and um he can't he can't drive my car he's not insured on my car so i had to drive him in and out of work today so whilst i was on my way in and out of his work this morning i've been listening to go tell the bees i'm gone by diana gabaldon which is totally not related to this video at all but um i only have one audible credit and i wasn't quite prepared to download any of these on audible just yet but i'm going to see if maybe um one of these is on Libby I might see if this is maybe on Libby or something like that I'm also kind of tempted to look at script and basically I went from two audible credits down to one to try and bring my costs down my monthly kind of direct debit costs down because probably like everybody else at the moment money is uh, a little bit tight and with everything kind of going up in price and our wages not going up maybe quite as the same rate um i'm very fortunate i've even had an inflation pay rise so like i'm very appreciative of that don't get me wrong um so i looked at bringing down my audible subscription down to one credit um a month because i haven't actually been using an awful lot of audible more of late um so I was looking at Scribd and I don't know if maybe Scribd might be a better option for me because it's unlimited access if I'm right. Am I right? And I think it's also ebooks as well. But I don't know what the I don't know what the catalogue's like, but I might might jump ship from Audible. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Anyway, yeah, I might see if this is on Libby or something like that. But yesterday it was just quite nice to just sit down and just read. Um but today, like I said, I've got more stuff to do. So maybe an audiobook with one of these books might be good. We'll see. We'll see. So I'll come back on a little bit later and I'll let you know my progress through this and let you know how I've got on. And yeah, I'm looking forward to starting this one. I've read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, but I haven't read anything else by them. Um, I am right in thinking, um, that Christina Lauren is actually two authors, right? I am right in thinking that. I think I am. I'm gonna get cracking and I'll come back and update you a little bit later on and let you know kind of what this book is about when I've read like the first 50 pages <laughs> and I actually know what I'm reading. <laughs> So it's a bit later now, it's quarter past three. I've had a really good mix of getting some stuff done, doing some chores around the house, getting some bits ready for our holiday, and then also had some time sort of sat down doing some reading sprints. I've just been asking Alexa and um, just doing like 30 minute timers and sitting down reading this for 30 minutes, getting back up, doing something else sorting out laundry you name it I've been dealing with it but um I have read so far 103 pages and this book is 300 and 
55 pages, so it's a very similar length to the um, Love Hypothesis. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about this book. This is about a, the main character, Jess. She's a single mum. She's got a seven-year-old daughter called Juno. Um, she works in statistics. I'm not going to even try and say statistic statistician can't say it she works freelance and um basically there's this new app where um you give a sample of your own spit and um from that you will generate matches um so very kind of like the one um sort of vibes that i'm getting from this you get varying different degrees of matches right from sort of like a base level match and it's all graded out of like a hundred um now, I said before that I didn't really know an awful lot about what this was about and I hadn't read the synopsis, the blurb on the back. But all I will say is that these first 100 pages, yeah, okay, they've been good and I've been really enjoying it and I am really liking it so far. It's basically just what's happened in the first 100 pages is, is on the synopsis, is on the blurb. So I'm glad I kind of hadn't read that until I was like sitting down thinking, right, I need to I need to kind of give a bit of an idea of what this is about. Read through the, synop the blurb on the back and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty much what I've just read. <laughs> um... So it's all about her match, who she matches with, and that's kind of as far as I've got at the moment. Um, but like I say, that's all on the blurb. So that's not really very spoilery in my opinion because it's on the blurb. Uh, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. I don't think it's quite as easy and engaging a read so far as the love hypothesis was i absolutely blitzed through loads of the love hypothesis however i had nothing to do yesterday when i was reading it um whereas today i've been very aware of the fact that no i need to get up i need to do this no i need to get up i need to do this rather than just sitting down and constantly reading it but i am enjoying it i'm liking it um on a sort of similar level to the love hypothesis so, so far, this is going really well because I'm really enjoying everything that I'm reading so far. Um, I'm intrigued to see where everything is going to take Jess because she's matched and what she's going to do. And she was kind of like a little bit mm, not interested with the whole um, scheme, but she kind of did it on a bit of a whim. Her friend um, Fizzy um, was really like loving the idea of it and had this great buzz around, oh yeah, let's do this. And Jess wasn't quite as interested. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out, how her and her match kind of play out. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's not a massively long book. So I don't see myself obviously finishing this today now, but I do um, see myself finishing this um, quite quickly. I'd like to think that I could finish this tomorrow. I'm not done reading for the day, so I'd like to think I could maybe read another 50 to 100 pages, maybe get halfway through the book um, today and then um, hopefully finish it tomorrow. I haven't got an awful lot on my plate for tomorrow either. We're just having a chilled start to the week um, before um, we go away on Thursday. So... Yeah, I'm 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 gr I'm glad this is going well and I'm also really looking forward to picking up lessons in chemistry as well because I know this isn't going to fit into quite the same sort of like genre as the other three um but I think this is going to be an interesting kind of contrasting one to kind of talk about and I'm I'm really buzzed to pick this up and I think depending on how quickly I finish this I will pick this one up next if I do finish this tomorrow which I'm hoping to do then I'll pick this up before we go away and hopefully read this before so then I don't have to I don't want to take it with me because this is only 300 um this is 386 pages so again it's not a massively long long book so maybe I can do that before we go away on Thursday we'll see we'll see I'll read as much I'll read as much as I can before we go away and obviously I've got um the kiss quotient on my kindle to read as well so yeah I'm gonna crack on and get on with some more of my chores that I've got to do and then I'll be back with an update, hopefully, a little bit later on. I have got to cook dinner and stuff. I was a bit of a cheat yesterday. I just chucked pizzas in the oven, but I am doing a proper dinner tonight. So um, I need to be getting on with that. And yeah, but I'll come back on and give you an update when there's one to give. So it's now Monday. It is Monday, isn't it? Yeah, Monday the 16th. And I've been very bad about updating you because I was going to update you first thing this morning. Um, <laughs> but instead... I sat down and I haven't got up 
that is a lie I probably got up a couple of times to go to the toilet um and have my lunch but I have finished the soulmate equation um I think I started this this morning on like page 158 so I have literally just blitzed through what's the time now half past one I've just blitzed through 200 pages this morning reading it and I really enjoyed this um I don't know quite how to compare it to Love Hypothesis I definitely feel like this had a much faster more upbeat pace to it and this was a little bit slower but not necessarily less engaging um but I really liked the character dynamics in this and there was something about this that maybe just felt a little bit more dare I say it grown up than this this felt a little bit more um it was still really really good and I really enjoyed it but there was something about this that maybe felt a little bit more naive and a little bit younger and this maybe felt a little bit more grown up um but I really enjoyed um, Jess's character in this and I thought it was a really interesting representation, um, you know, the representation of being a single mum and um, also then having the, what this video is all about, having also the scientific and the statis, statistician, stat, she works in statistics, also having that side of it as well and having... Um, it was quite nice to have a sort of similarity and a pull to this one with um, the doctor who's running the whole app gen genetically, which was the um, kind of like matchmaking service. Um, I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the kind of like drama when the drama happened, like a standard romance novel. It had drama in it at some point, like it was going to, and there was going to have to be a resolution to that drama. Um, and I just, I just really enjoyed it. And yes, okay, I didn't necessarily read it as quickly as I read The Love Hypothesis, but I still really enjoyed it. And I think still read it quite quickly, considering the opportunity to read um, yesterday was much smaller so yeah really really enjoyed and like I say they're just a slightly different so comparing them is a little bit unfair um but I would say this feels a little bit more some equation feels a little bit more grown up and this feels a little bit younger but that might also be to do with the fact that the character in this one is um I think in their mid-20s and the main character in this one is in her 30s so you know I am now going to crack on with, um, I've got to do loads of washing up because <laughs> I cooked dinner last night and decided not to wash up afterwards. But the book I'm going to start next is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. Um, I, like I've mentioned previously, I'm not going to read too much into the synopsis of this, but I do know that it's early 1960s. And I also had to um, Google Hastings Research Institute which is where this is based because I live close to Hastings but it's not set in the UK I believe it's set in um the states um I think in California so I am looking forward to this I'm going to take the dust jacket off look at that look at that I'm going to take the dust jacket off I am going to put a bookmark in it November 1961 I'm looking forward to this Something a little bit different from the whole sciencey mathematical side of things. And I'm also going to update my reading journal. Anyway, I'm going to get cracking on and I'll come and give you an update a little bit later on when I know a little bit more about this book and maybe have some initial thoughts on it. Good morning, everybody. I am battling the sun this morning, which I'm not going to grumble at because the last couple of days have been a little bit more overcast and drizzly and not quite so nice. I am aware that I look really shiny. I've just done my skincare 
It is, did I say it's Tuesday morning? It's Tuesday morning, it's just coming up to half past eight. I've been up for a little while. My other half, uh, my fiance, has had to go and take um, the motorbike in this morning for some work um, before we head off out on it on Thursday for our little trip away. So um, he had to get up at a re reasonable time this morning and I'm his alarm clock. <laughs> so I had to get up at a reasonable time to get him out this morning. I am going to go and do something today which um, I'm a little bit nervous about um, and I don't kind of want to talk about it until I've maybe I've done it and seen how it's gone. I know that sounds really cryptic but it's something that I'm kind of a little bit nervous about, quite nervous about and um, I'm sure it'll be fine and I'm sure it'll be a really nice day um, but I'm a little bit... <laughs> So um, I actually decided yesterday evening to kind of, I didn't focus too much on my book, which I have made some progress on and I'll tell you about that in a little minute. But what I did decide to do was I decided to have a little bit of a pamper evening. So I did do a face mask, I had a really nice long shower, I washed my hair um, and let it dry kind of naturally. Um, I am probably going to put it up today, but just because I'm doing something specific and I probably will want it up. Um, and then, um, yeah, I did like really nice skincare, I did like a moisturising treatment on my face as well. And then I've just come on this morning, I've just done my skincare because I need, I want to do a little bit of makeup today on my face. Um, and I think that's going to be quite important having like a, not like a full face of makeup, but having makeup on. Um, not that you have to wear makeup to feel good, but I think it will help today. Um, so um, I am going to do that. So I was like, oh, I'll do my skincare and then I'll come and update you. Um, I did mean to update you yesterday evening, but um, like I say, my plans kind of sort of changed. And I have only read 50, 51 pages of um, lessons in chemistry so far. And I was going to come on and give you a bit more of a synopsis and an idea about what this book was about. Um, but 50 pages in and I'm still not really sure necessarily where we're going um and I don't really want to read the blurb because I don't want something to be spoiled um like we discussed on um I think it was the soulmate equation which is now down there on my um on my red shelf um the whole first hundred pages which is like a third of the book was like basically the blurb um so I'm not going to read the blurb of this because like I said don't want to get spoiled but so far we've met um what appears to be the main character Elizabeth Zott um we've met her kind of what is in the current what we assume is the current day in the 60s um and we've then kind of gone back a decade into the early 50s and her time as a a chemist and a scientist in a very very different world to what we know it as today back in the 50s she obviously was women didn't work women a lot of women couldn't even go to certain universities still I believe and um it's all about her and um so far and um, the current day's timeline has um she's she's got a daughter Madeline yeah and um we know that in the current day timeline, she is the host of a TV show called Supper at Six. Um, and it we kind of know where that's all sprung from um, and where she's kind of come from being a chemist to being a TV host, show host and cooking. So I'm intrigued to read more. And once I maybe know a little bit more about the story, I might give you a little bit more. Um, but this is is very different so far to the two other books that I read, The Love Hypothesis and The Soulmate Equation. I don't have them to hand. Um, this isn't kind of as sort of like, um, it's not quite as fast paced. And obviously we've got this historical element, so it's very different. And we have, I think, some much bigger sort of topics discussed like sexism, racism, um, and trigger warnings as well within the first 50 pages there has been kind of like an assault sort of situation as well um, kind of sort of physical and sexual assault so if that's something that's going to be triggering for you then I wouldn't necessarily recommend it it wasn't massively um, in depth and it wasn't didn't you know, it wasn't like pages and pages and pages it was over quite quickly but just a warning for you um, and I'm intrigued to see where this is going and 
how relationships are going to go and um I just love the look of this book as well and I was looking at it the other day uh, yesterday and I was like to my other half what's the chemical symbol for <laughs> and he was like uh and we had like a little game we had a little game that we played which was quite fun so I'm hoping to get some more of this read today um like I said I am going out uh, this morning. I'm not quite sure what time I'm going to be back. I'm not quite sure how long I'm going to be out for. So I'm not quite sure how much I'm going to get read today. Um, but I do plan on reading when I get back and um, I'm hoping to make some progress. I'd like to get um, maybe 50 to 100 pages read again today. Um, and I would like to get this finished before I go away on Thursday. It's Tuesday today, so I've got all day today and all day tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, I would quite like to finish it, um, because like I said, I'm not going to be taking a physical book away with me. I'm just going to be taking my Kindle and reading the quick kiss quotient. Um, but we'll see how that goes because I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. I did read like loads yesterday, so I was kind of like, when I was looking at this, I was like, oh, I haven't really read much today. And I was like, hang on a minute, Sophie, you read like 200 odd pages of a book uh, and you finished a book and then you picked this up. So the fact that you only read 50 pages of this is not a big, not a big deal. But because I started a new book, I felt like I hadn't read much yesterday. Um, so yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to reading more of this. And I'm also quite liking that the chapters, even though they're quite long, some of them, there's quite a lot of um, breaks in the chapters um like this so you kind of feel like it's segueing on to maybe a slightly different point and it means you can like in a couple of places actually put the book down if you wanted to um like I was reading yesterday evening whilst I was cooking so it was like okay I had a stop place I could stop and then go and do whatever I needed to do so anyway I haven't got a clue what I'm going to wear today I want to try and wear something suitable for what I'm doing but I don't really know what to wear and I'm sorry I'm being really cloak and dagger with this but I'm a little bit insecure about what I'm going and doing um and I'm gonna put my face on once my moisturizer sunk in and I look a little less oily um and I hope I hope it's a good day I'll come and update you a little bit later on it's later on on Tuesday it is half past eight I haven't read anything today I'm still on page 51 um today was actually an amazing day and I spent a lot more time with my mum today than I expected to so I didn't get any reading done but it's not the end of the world I still have some time tomorrow that I can do reading in but what I think is going to have to happen now is I think I'm going to have to pause this for whilst I'm away read the kiss quotient whilst I'm away and then come back to this when I get back it just means that this vlog is going to take a little bit longer to do than I wanted but that's not the end of the world. So, I might even read a bit more this evening. I've got a few things I've got to do um, packing wise for holiday. So I'm gonna get some thick bits together and start collating some bits for that. So if I get the opportunity to read this evening, I'll update you with that in the morning. I'm hoping to get a bit read tomorrow as well, because if I do most of the packing today, and my other half is going to have to go and collect his bike tomorrow. It's delayed at the workshop and we need it for Thursday. Pray for me. When you'll be watching this, it will only be over and done with and we should have it back. But So, yes. Um, so I know at least I'll get like a couple of hours time then that potentially I can read in. But not quite the day I expected, but an amazing day nonetheless an amazing day nonetheless so good so so good so it is well it's not going to be wednesday for much longer um i haven't got my glasses on i've literally just done i've just gone and had a shower washed my hair and done my skincare uh, i don't know if you can even hear it in the background my other half is trimming his beard <laughs> We have had such a horribly stressful day um, for various reasons, unfortunately. And cut a long story short, I've done so little reading and we are literally leaving the house at 7am tomorrow morning to go away for three nights. 
Um, so I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film whilst we're away. Um, I'm not taking lessons in chemistry with me. Um, I will be reading The Kiss Quotient on my Kindle. So I will try and update you as I'm going along. Um, but the clips might be sparse and few and far between and not very long because I might not get much reading done anyway. Um, but I have made some progress in this today. Um, I think I started the day on page like 51 um, and I have made it to page 133. So I've got a good um, like 80 pages read today. Um, I'm not quite ready to sleep yet. I'm feeling a little bit too on edge and very stressed out. So I think I am going to go get snuggled in bed. I will put my glasses back on um, and do a little bit of reading before I actually go to sleep. But I am really enjoying this. Um, the characters are really quirky. My other half is watching a video in the background as well. I really hope you can't hear that. Um, it's really quirky. The characters are really interesting. And um, it kind of gives me... It kind of gives me Eleanor Oliphant vibes. Because of the kind of quirky nature of the characters. But also, I really like how kind of... Before her time, um, the main character, Elizabeth Zott, she's like a lady, like a head, not before her time, ahead of her time. Um, and I really like that. And some of the commentary about oh, why does it matter that I'm a woman? Um, why is it no different for, you know, a man in the same situation as me? And why can't I do this? And why can't I do that? And she's very ahead of her time. But I think actually a lot of those kind of themes and a lot of those things actually are maybe still prevalent in society today. I don't know. But yes, I'm really enjoying it. I'm really intrigued to see where it goes. It's definitely a slower paced read to the other two that I've already read. Um, the Love Hypothesis and Soulmate Equation. And this is a very different sort of book um, in the sense of it's not, there is a romance in it, but it's not solely focused on the romance. And it's a lot more than just that. Um, and I think more so than the other two. Um, so this is a bit of a kind of like, you know, black sheep of the other books that I'm reading but I'm thoroughly enjoying it and I can't wait to read some more and after today after tonight this will be put down for a few days and I'll pick up the kiss quotient and like I say I'll film as many clips as I can along the way of what I'm reading and if I'm reading and um, when I get back I'll get all this footage together and finish this off as well um this book so sorry this clip is all over the place I've had such a bad day <laughs> I'm like this close to going and having a little cry not because I'm emotional but just because like I've had a day <laughs> anyway onwards and upwards we're going on holiday tomorrow and I'm super excited and yeah that's what I'm going to focus on that is what I'm going to focus on so this vlog hasn't really gone according to plan. Um, cut a long story short, I've already kind of filmed this clip and I just waffled on and on, so I just deleted it and I'm starting again. Cut a long story short, we went away on holiday and the last time I spoke to you, I was talking about how I was putting lessons in chemistry down and I was picking up the kiss quotient, taking my Kindle away with me whilst we were away and um, that I would update you if I could along the way, but if not, I'd update you when I got back. And I read a grand total of 35 pages whilst we were away. We were away for four days, three nights, and I read a grand total of 35 pages. And then when I came back, um, I knew that I had to read Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. Uh, we're doing a Throne of Glass series read along on the Daisy and Bee book club. And I knew I had to get this read for the 1st of June, which happens to have been yesterday. So I wanted to focus on this first and get this read so that I knew that I had my other kind of obligations kind of covered and then I could go back to the Kiss Quotient. And then I was like, right, well, before I go back to it, I should do an update, I should do a clip and like for the vlog. And um, that didn't happen. And then I basically blitzed through the majority of the book in probably two sittings, which was sandwiched around my nan's funeral. Um, I haven't talked about it and trigger warnings for death and I'm not going to go into detail but we did lose my nan a few weeks ago and um, this past week um, we had my nan's funeral and 
cut a long story short with that as well i don't want to be deemed to be insensitive but if i talk about it in too in depth i'm just going to get emotional it was initially a big relief for me for both my nan and for my mum and my aunt who have put their whole lives on hold to be there with my nan at the final stages of her life she has mixed my nan had mixed dementia and um it was a very very difficult difficult like last well five years um if not maybe longer um and unfortunately in the last few years my nan's actual kind of physical health has really plummeted rapidly as well and um for me it was initially my feeling was my overwhelming feeling was relief um like I could relax like okay my nan's at peace now she's not suffering she's not anxious she's not confused she's not overwhelmed she's at peace now um and also sort of selfishly for my mum and my aunt um like they can now relax as well they can now even though it's easier said than done completely but they can kind of like now and they can kind of they can not go back to how it was before because life won't ever be the same for them but like I say they put their whole lives on hold to be there for my nan in the final stages of her life so things can kind of go back to how they should be for for them as well and, and they can move forward um and then we had my nan's funeral this past week and up until that point I'd been quite I'd been okay like don't get me wrong I'd been sad and I was emotional but I'd been okay and then on the day of my nan's actual funeral I was a wreck um and it kind of like I think it all hit me and I read the rest of the kiss quotient like I said kind of sandwiched around the time of my nan's funeral um I read a lot the day before and then I read a chunk after my nan's funeral I came home and I just wanted to cocoon myself in my bed and just kind of be transported to somewhere else for a little bit and so I wasn't in the mood to do um vlog clips and update you on it but I have finished The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang and let's now be a bit more positive. Um, I really enjoyed this book. I read it on my Kindle. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought the representation for the autism spectrum was really interesting and I don't think I've ever read something quite like that um, apart from um, Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine um, but I don't think it's ever explicitly kind of like mentioned in Eleanor Oliphant if my memory serves me right I should probably do a reread of that I don't think it's ever explicitly mentioned what um or whether Eleanor Oliphant actually has anything um or has a disorder or anything like that but several tendencies kind of ring true with kind of the autism spectrum but um I liked the characters I liked the kind of Asian aspect for it as well all the kind of like cultural um, sides of it. I really enjoyed the characters and um, I really liked the love interest as well. And I'm going to be really, really annoying now and not even remember who the love interest is. What was his name? Michael, Stella and Michael. And I loved that Michael was a tailor and um, I love fake dating. It's one of my favorite tropes in kind of romance. I love this kind of like fake dating that then becomes a real relationship. And I really liked Michael's kind of like, um I really I really kind of liked his um kind of growth and some of like his demons that he was suffering with and I think it was quite nice to see kind of them both have struggles if that makes sense um I really enjoyed it and um it was different it was still had the kind of it wasn't quite as gripping still as the love hypothesis and I think we have to kind of come up with a winner um and move I'll move on in a minute to the elephant in the room which is lessons in chemistry um I like that this still had sort of like a science a, a mathematical kind of background um with Stella being a, an econometrician econometrician is that the right way to say it I've been really bad at all of these like words like statistician and econometrician and everything but um I liked having that aspect to it and having kind of that uh, her love for her work and her passion for it was really really endearing and I really liked that side of it um so 
I'm sorry that this vlog didn't quite end the way I thought it was going to end. And like I say, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is lessons in chemistry. Um, I don't think I've read any since I last updated you on it. I'm on, currently on page 152, which I'm also really annoyed at myself because I've left myself in the middle of a chapter. Um, I am still enjoying this book, but like I say, when I came back from my holiday, I didn't finish or carry on with the Kiss Quotient straight away because I had other reading obligations. Um, and now going into June, I'm taking part in Whateverthon, which is hosted by Maddie, um, created by Maddie from Book Browsing Blog. So I'm going to try and get this in at some point in some way onto my Whateverthon TBR and read that for some of the um, bingo prompts. Um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to end this vlog with having read the three. So obviously I read The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood, Christina Lauren's Soulmate Equation and The Kiss Quotient. I read these three and that was the original plan and I kind of deviated from the plan by starting Lessons in Chemistry. But what I do want to do is I do want to finish Lessons in Chemistry at some point and maybe include that in something else I'm doing, a wrap up video. I will do a bit more of a detailed kind of thought on it once I've finished it. But let's for a minute talk about what my thoughts are on these three books because these are all TikTok hyped books, um, apart from maybe The Soulmate Equation, not quite so much, but Christina Lauren is a TikTok hyped author. Um, I thought they, um, ma majority of them I think lived up to the hype. I enjoyed them all. I really, really enjoyed them all. But I think the overall winner has to be The Love Hypothesis if we're gonna rank them. Um, I normally don't make decisions this easy. So this is like, this is quite big for me. Um, but I really, really enjoyed this. And I think out of all of them, this is the one that gripped me the most. However, I would say this one was probably the, not immature, but the least mature. Like, I feel like if we were talking ranking like maturity levels, I feel like the Kiss Quotient would be top as like the most mature, I think. And then we would have the Soulmate Equation and then we'd have the Love Hypothesis like at the bottom. I feel like this is maybe a bit younger, but I think that I just, I think that might be one of the reasons why I really enjoyed it and I found it really, really gripping. But don't get me wrong, I enjoyed them all and I'm really looking forward to doing some more sort of TikTok hyped videos. Um, maybe I think I've got like a Colleen Hoover, um, which is a very, very hyped author at the moment. I think I've got like, I think I've got enough books by Colleen Hoover that I can do a sort of Colleen Hoover themed read along, read a thon. Um, and I also would really like to get through um, Holly Black's The Cruel Prince trilogy before I read The Book of Night, her newest adult release. So I've got a couple in the mix, but if there's something particular that you'd like to see also in July, it's not been announced yet on the book club, so I won't tell you what I'm doing, but I've also kind of hinted this, I think, elsewhere. It was at the beginning of this video, but I'm gonna be doing a themed reading blog for July because I'm reading all, majority all of one sort of like overarching theme, which I'm really looking forward to. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, please let me know and please let me know if you've got any other ideas of things you'd like to say and sorry it didn't quite go how I wanted but sometimes life just gets in the way and sometimes I'm just not in the mood for filming and I will get to lessons in chemistry and I will let you know what my thoughts are on it when I'm done with it and I'm actually annoyed at myself that I've put it down and left it but like I say I'm gonna have to come back to this and fit this in to my shelf slayers team shelf slayers over here prompt so thank you all so much for watching like i said apologies it wasn't quite how i expected things to go i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye